What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and the second last, I think, episode of The Acolyte came out last night, and uh, I don't know, did you even notice? I'm guessing you didn't. Um, I, I suspect when we get updated viewership numbers, if we ever get updated viewership numbers from Disney, there will be a legendary uh, drop-off after the second and third episode of this horrendous series. Now, I will admit, I do admit... Okay, I've gotten caught up, caught up on the show. The, I will say the first two or three episodes are, in fact, the worst. Um, it obviously sets a really, really low bar for episode four and five and six, but it, it isn't like so much now as where it's like insultingly bad. It's just like comically bad now, and the double standard that the press is wide open. Uh, embracing about this show and its cringe thirst trapping uh, is legendary as well. Uh, there was not a lot to talk about in this latest episode. It had its cringe moments. You had the, you know, the whip or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, neat, cool. Everybody thinks that's really neat. It is kind of neat. Um, however, the big moment of this show is the star of the show uh seeing i mean i wrote thirst service to shippers who only care about the show now that there's suddenly a hot guy in it i think disparu correctly pointed that out uh you know suddenly everyone's talking about the show because there's a hot guy in it i mean look at this crap the acolyte spoilers so this is what seduced by the dark side means i mean she saw his junk and now she's evil you know, and again, you know that you know the paid accounts because this account is literally called the Lalo Light. Like, uh, a sh it's literally a, a shipping account that is probably a marketing tool that you know gets a bunch of bot likes. That's my and bot likes from Pakistani bot farms. That's my guess. Uh, this is not like a normal account. You can see Lily. Remember in Revenge of the Sith where they put the helmet on Darth Vader and the music stopped and he started breathing. Remember, the Acolyte, you are so dumb and unoriginal because they literally redo this. They literally copied it. You know, is it supposed to be a throwback? Also, let me point this out. You could see absolutely nothing. Sorry, they're mowing my lawn right now outside, so I don't know if um that's coming through or not, but... What could you, you couldn't even see with this mask on. Look at even the top comment. WTF, is that really the vision inside? I assume because of Star Wars, it would display some sort of HUD, like heads up display inside. That's the most ridiculous thing to wear in this case. You couldn't even see. Like th this is the corniest show I stopped watching after the second episode. She's like, great, but I can't see. I expected to see a repurposed Iron Man heads up display. I mean, why, you know, like, I, you know, so people are, yeah, just stop watching it, stop watching it. I mean, sure. Here you have Heels vs. Babyface, a perfect tweet. The Acolyte episode 6 TLDR. Uh, OSHA sees uh, Smilo Ren's junk and is now bad. Yeah, that's basically the show. That's basically the entire episode. You know, that's basically the entire episode. You know, it's, and you know, Nerd Roddick points out, write what you know, former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> so she walks up to him uh, while he's like, you know, in the water. I'm not gonna show it obviously, but he walks out in the buff. They don't show that part, but it's implied. Um, and of course, you know, all these women objectifying this poor man, you would think there'd be dozens of articles from Places like Kotaku, Polygon, um, the New York Times, uh, Mary Sue, Salon.com, um, IGN. You would assume that there would be dozens of articles talking about the female gaze and the rise of the fem cells, right? How fem cells ruined Star Wars and, and all sorts of negative articles about women ogling him and right you know nobody cares about the writing they're only talking about there's a 
hot guy and suddenly everyone should pay attention because hot guy. It, it, it's wild to me that this is, you know, this double standard is, is so like widely accepted. It's so insanely accepted. There are half dozen articles. Here's salon.com. The acolyte proved what female fans knew all along. The powerful bedroom appeal of the dark side. What? That's not very feminist. How about Polygon? Another woke art woke outlet. In the acolyte, Star Wars Dark Side has a good reason for being sexy. What? What? I thought that this would how about Time magazine? The rise of the thirst trap villain. You're joking, right? Of course, written by a woman who does not, who has probably written articles about, by the way, um, dudes and, and chicks, like Hollywood actors have been attractive since the beginning of time. This isn't a rise of good looking actors. I, I, what is this? In the fifth episode of The Acolyte, the latest Star Wars series on Disney Plus. The villain, known simply as The Stranger, finally reveals himself while wearing a mask to hide his identity. Uh, I'm surprised he wasn't a white male, to be honest with you. Uh, while wearing the mask, the mysterious Sith Lord goes on a Jedi ending spree. At first, he takes out only minor characters whose names we don't know through specific in a specifically brutal fashion. Um, then he takes out fan favorite character. The Jedi eventually disarm him, but he still manages to end another main character. At some point during the battle, the mask falls, and finally, we see, after all this carnage, the audience sees the powerful Force users actually uh, previously disguised as an apothecary guy working for the bad guy. Actor Manny Jacinto successfully sells a transformation from hapless henchman to glowing evildoer, glowering evildoer. But the reveal of his face almost didn't matter because the audience had already been distracted by his impossibly chiseled arms. Creator, creator Leslie Headland or her costume designer clothed him in the Sith version of a muscle shirt, a muscle cloak, so that he could bear his veiny biceps during the fight. The impressive choreography of the lightsaber duel also allowed him to flex those arms a lot. The scene went viral because of fem cells, obviously, not just because of character swordsmanship, which was terrible. Um, Entertainment Weekly quickly posted a cover featuring his arms. Um, Demir, uh, uh, you, know, you are despicable. OMG arms. I hate you arms. I don't even want to look at you. How'd you get those? Get away from me. Oh no, I tripped into your biceps, a fan account tweeted. I need him biblically. I need him in a way that is concerning to feminism. Manny's arms are trying to tying people into knots today, observed film writer. Manny's arms are going to bring people to the acolyte the way Jeremy Allen White's arms brought people to the bear. What? What? The bear is a good show, but what? I didn't see anybody. Th I mean, I guess the guy's pretty good looking, I guess. I always knew him as Lip from uh, Shameless. And then they whole, write a whole article about, you know, all these hot dudes, right? But again, if a man did it here... Leslie Headland promised a dark turn in the final episode of season one. God, I hope it get can I hope it gets canceled. The acolyte proved what female fans knew all along: the powerful bedroom appeal of the dark side. I can feel it again. The call to invest in the incredibly problematic character. Why? Because he's hot. His arms aren't even that great. Currently having flashbacks. Someone needs fan music. First time. I mean, like, all these cringe fem cells are objectifying this poor man. You know? It's, it's, he didn't ask for that. His arms are weak. What are they talking about? I mean, like, obviously, I'm no physical specimen, but this is not the arms that I thought, you know, that you would think that people... I mean, yes, he's fit, very fit, far more fit than I. But he's not, like, swole. That's so weird. These women are creepy and gross. And by the way, they probably don't even watch the show. They don't even watch the show. They just look at crap online. You know? 
you know, you could say, uh, I've accepted my darkness. What have you done with yours? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, fem cells are real. Um, it's totally okay when um, women do it to men, when men objectify women, um, when women objectify men, that's totally fine. You see, if this were men thirsting over a woman, these same outlets would have a meltdown. Pathetic. It's okay when they objectify men. Um, you know, there's plenty of Sith Lords that could have lusted over it without destroying the Star Wars franchise. It's disgusting, to be honest. The double standards for women um, objectifying men and young boys, they get a pass. You know, all this kind of stuff. The Acolyte season... Eight Game of Thrones. The Acolyte is season eight Game of Thrones of Star Wars. People are going to turn their backs on the franchise forever after this one. Um, ridiculous. Star Wars doesn't need this in it. These people just write whatever drivel pops into their heads. You know, this is a much better take with receipts included. So are you suggesting that I should abandon the idea that the Sith Master looks, who took the stranger in as an apprentice is, a, is Leia in a black bikini? Well, again, I don't have any problem with it being with people finding Leia attractive, but I don't write those articles. I don't put out those videos. I don't complain about it. They do. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe or follow down below. We'll talk to you again real soon.